Hello, my absolutely beautiful Sagittarian friends, and welcome to your horoscope for August of 2022. We're Sag. This month, we've got some planets giving us some cues and some hints towards the signatures and lessons we're going to work on for the next few months that need to be like this last portion of 2022 review. But also, as we're stepping forward and we're pushing into Virgo season, it is also this really delicious energy available for you where you get to take a new title this year. And I am absolutely excited and delighted for you. Now, whether you like the new title you're getting or or not, or you like the change of title that you're taking, this is a season for you. Right here, Sagittarius, where who we know you as in public gets to be different. We're going to recognize you with a little bit of a different name. And even if it just means that you are seen at your local library, the volunteer shelter, you know, you, you are um, a politician, whatever your status is, your impact matters. And the name that we call you and the name that you respond to matters as well. And I really want you to let that hit you this month, Sagittarius, because as I say this to you, I want you to think about how many names you're responding to in your life right now, whether they are colorful cursing names or they are beautiful names whispered by a baby. What are the names and the titles that you are responding to right now because you're getting a rise in their recognition and it is just so cool. All right, Sag, let's get in here and talk about what's going on in these signatures that are available for us, okay? Right here at the beginning of the month in August, we are going to see in August, I know we're in August, so do you, on the 4th, <laughs> we're going to see Mercury move into the energy of Virgo. Now, this is joining this beautiful top of your chart, height of the energy that is available in your chart space, the 10th house, your title, your reputation your work life, your soul level calling that you've got to hand out. Now, even if you're not working and you're retired, you've never had a corporate job, whatever this looks like, this is the process of Mercury, your mind, your communication, something that we know you as becoming very visible in public. Now, the other thing about it that I ask you, what names are you responding to is because Virgo really wants to be the best that it can be. It wants to be the most healthy. So if somebody is calling you a name that is not your name and you are responding, I want you to know why. Why are you doing that? What's the motivation behind that? You are in a position right now where the sun is getting ready to rise to the top of your chart. You respond to the beauty and the divinity that is your name or a title that you willingly take on and nothing less. Now, the other part that I love about Virgo energy is that it is about discernment. So practically, earth sign, in your career, in your work, in your organization, do you need to get organized? Do you need to figure out what is the priority and have some discernment about it so that you can get organized, right? Mercury in this energy is going to be helping you have the most useful information available to you, okay? On the 11th, we've got Venus moving into the energy of Leo, lighting up this ninth house space, publishing, marketing, broadcasting, higher education, travel, just an expansion of you out into the world. And Venus is very good when it comes into a ninth house space. And remember, the sun is over here as well for making you very attractive and magnetic or this area, but also making you more magnetic and attractive to the public in this area. So if you are going out, even if you are going to the airport, I'm going to tell you I would love for you to spend August 11th to September 5th Look and live in your best if you are going on adventures, right? Put your best heart forward, your big, your big cat energy forward into whatever you're doing. It's magnetic. You could find that this ninth house area for you is more social. Are you teaching a class? Are you taking a class? Are you practicing that foreign language that you've been learning? Are you going into legal negotiations and you really need some courage and some diplomacy to also join you? This is a phenomenal transit for that, okay? Now, also on the same day, we're going to have a full moon at 19 degrees of Aquarius. So this is going to light up your third house space, contracts, negotiations speaking, learning, studying, 
teaching, writing a book, fixing a website, um, buying and selling things. This is wonderful for the negotiation of that or signing that contract. Things to do with siblings. Maybe you're even going on a short trip or a short move in some way, shape, or form. Now, this particular moon is conjunct Saturn, which is one of its rulers, and square Uranus, which is its other ruler. So it's the signature to me, Sagittarius, that whatever you are taking on, speaking, teaching, learning, third house activities, um, there is a full mooning quality to it. You're ending something, you're acknowledging something, or you're making a pretty big adjustment because Saturn here tells me it's pretty serious. Maybe are you moving into a different social group? Remember, Remember, it's August. It's still the beginning of the year, right? You know, new social energy becomes available, Aquarius. Um, but it is square that Uranian energy. So it's saying I'm breaking free from something that had a lot of value to me before, but I have to detach to grow in this direction, to put my serious focus here. So that could very much so be what that moon is bringing to your attention. Now on the 20th, we have got uh, Mercury moving into pre-retrograde shadow time at 24 degrees of Virgo. So I would love for you to identify 24 degrees of Virgo on your chart, Sagittarius, because this is where the beginning of the Mercury retrogrades that's going to happen here in September. This is the beginning of those lessons right here, okay? Now also on the 20th, we've got Mars moving into the energy of Gemini lighting up this seventh house space. Okay, we typically see Mars in a sign for about five, six weeks and it's motivated or it inflames what it needs to and then we move on. No, not this time. This planet is going to be in this sign for seven months. We're going to cross into 2023 well working with this energy. So this is a new foundation. This is movement. This is action. This is energy, Sagittarius, around relationships, okay? partnerships, conscious, chosen, one-on-one -on -one relationships, that's business, romance, um, personal relationships, a new relationship of you with you. I just told you, I just asked you, what is the name and the title that you are responding to? And if it is something that is not what you'd like to be responding to, or it is something that makes you feel so in love with who you are today, that creates a new relationship with you with you, right? So, but Mars and Gemini also wants to get out there and see the big wide world, learn things, be curious, go see things. We learn things when we go on these adventures, don't we? So in your relationships, expect over the next seven months to gather and collect some different relationships and then also spend some time reviewing those. You know, one of the visions that I have is think about, you know, think about the kids. It's August. Think about going into a, a new year, a new social setting. You're around the whole class. You're kind of figuring out who's who. And as the Mars retrograde comes in, you're like, ah, I'm actually only friends with these 15 people. You know what I mean? So you kind of get to whittle the group down to really do your quality learning teaching and sharing of yourself there, okay? Now Mars is still Mars in your relationships. If something needs to be enthusiastically handled, Mars is going to be about that. If there's conflict, Mars will bring the inflammation that says we need to deal with something in this relationship. And remember, it is always to get what is not working, the thinking, the communication, the relationship that's not right out of your space, okay? On the 22nd, we've got the sun now entering into the energy of Virgo, light, heat, life, vitality, and a willingness to be called by the divine name that is yours and whispered through this universe. The work, your work life, you can be seen, promotions, recognition, organization is available here under this particular um, energy as well. On the 24th, we've got Uranus going retrograde at 18 degrees of Taurus. Now, if you think back in July, really between July 20th and August 2nd, but most specifically the heat of it was July 31st, where we saw Uranus, the North Node, and Mars come together at this 18 degrees of Uranus, where there would have been destiny meetups, no matter how big or how small it was some set of people, places, or things, or circumstances, or lessons came into your space and it said, you have got to detach from this. This, can't, this doesn't have value in this old way anymore. Innovate, 
detached so that you can move forward with your own self-sufficiency, your own resources, so that you can move forward in your own new daily routine, your own health, your own wellness. Detach from this so that we can go here and build value. Now, this Uranus retrograde is going to be a continuation of that detachment because just because we're being asked to detach for freedom for our greatest good doesn't always make it the easiest thing, right? Now, in full cycle, back up for me, please, to May 7th of 2022 what was happening here this is when uranus would have been at 14 degrees of taurus what was lighting up in your life what was changing what was going on where was there a small sense of freedom or detachment or rebellion even coming up for you and we'll follow that all the way until may 9th of 2023 where we see the full implication of this uranus retrograde cycle Okay, so freedom is not free, first of all. It requires pieces of us surrender and slog off, and we've got to break them down and detach. But also, this kind of freedom takes a little bit of time, and the universe is kind and loving and gives us a nice retrograde to get that all worked out. Now, as we get to the 25th, we'll see Mercury move into the energy of Libra, where it's also going to take its retrograde in September, but right now it's lighting up the 11th house space with a little Venus in the mouth, right, Libra? So friendly, this is a friendly transit for your social life, friends, social grouping, social media, organizations, long range plans, goals, aspirations that you have for yourself. Being known for something is wonderful in the 11th house as well. And Mercury and Libra is diplomatic. It is friendly. There's a willingness to converse a little bit. So it makes the navigating all of the things with the relationships and the title, I think a little bit easier. And just remember, we're gonna review these beginning degrees of Libra as we get into September, okay? As we're closing out this month on the 27th, we're going to see a new moon happening at four degrees of Virgo. Plant your seeds of intention, Sagittarius. Where do you want to go? Who do you want to be known as? What is the name that you wish to be whispered on the breeze no matter where you're at and it gets people's attention? What do you want to do for work? Right? Maybe you're even deciding a different career path. You're organized, you're discerning, you've got a bit more priority. Whatever it is, plant your seeds of intention for some new routine, something specific that can help you achieve the goals that you would like to achieve in this 10th house area, okay? All right, my beautiful Sagittarian friends, I hope you have an absolutely gorgeous August. And for my friends and Sagittarian friends and children who are going back to school, I wish you all the best in the next year. I love you guys. Bye.